TV. So today, Sue and I are gonna talk about we can overcome anything once we raise our vibration. Yep. So right now, a lot of people are having a difficult, challenging time. Some of my friends have been, you know, a great time, but they are very minority people. I'm talking about majority of people are having a challenging time. So, you know, time like that, a lot of people feel like, you know, you feel powerless, you feel like your voice doesn't matter, or even like, you know, some people, of course, a lot of people decided to not to go through the job, but some people, you know, encounter their family or loved one or their kids decided to do that and worry about it. So we do want to talk about this in more, um, transparent manner. So um, my background, I did go to nursing school and then I also did the work for our pharmaceutical company uh, to do some consultation, uh, interviewing doctor and stuff like that. So I do know a um, lot of stuff about the clinical trials and the stuff like that. So, you know, um, it's not, I don't know what's going on. Besides me having um, clairvoyance and intuitive sense and I can read energy and stuff like that. In my opinion, when the um, stuff happened in March, first thing I told people around me was, well, sooner or later, they're gonna come up with a vaccine and they're gonna sell that because that is a whole purpose of this COVID. And then the people around me said, you know, it's gonna take a long time. It's not gonna happen any time. And then in eight months that happened. But, you know, some people chose not to have a job. Some people chose to have it. Of course, we are ascending ourselves to 5D, we are right now at 4.8D. So it's not about you did the job and you're stupid and whatever and you didn't do, so you're killing other people. It's not like that. Um, shifting ourselves to higher consciousness means we respect each other's choice. And United States used to be the land of free. It's not like that anymore. It's a lot like Japan now. It's a lot like Japan. You can really say different opinion. You can really um, be who you are. You have to assimilate into majority's voice. Otherwise, you're going to get, you know, get into big trouble. That's how Japan is like. So if any people think Japan is a land of some kind of miracle, that's bullshit. And this is a lot of reason why some of the Japanese people, um, legally immigrate into other countries so they can be who they are and they can be free. So um, besides that, the most beautiful thing about being American is to voice our opinions. And we can voice our opinions. It doesn't matter, right? If you're racist and you will say controversial opinion about the other race, supposedly, you could say that before. Before we, uh, people started having this political correctness, you could say anything. People might judge you like, oh, he's racist. He doesn't know anything what he's talking about. But whole point is you could say anything, good or bad. And that is a blessing because some of you feel like, you know, you have to watch over your mouth and then, you just have to self-censor what you have to say and how much you can say. And some of those, those of you younger generation, they feel like you have to walk on the eggshell so you don't hurt anybody. The news says, no matter what you say, somebody usually may get angry or get hurt. 
So just be you and say what you have to say. So at least you're not fake. So what do you think about that, Sue? Oh, yeah, I agree. Um, you know, if we're going to talk about uh, transmutation, um, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have to have freedom to say and believe what we think. And what you were talking about is the programming that's been thrust on uh, United States citizens for a very long time now. And when you talk about the younger generation, I would propose that they didn't even have the education, not even close to what I had. And it's not that mine was so much better. What it was was more honest. There was more truth in the education. And so we could make up our own minds, what we thought. Yeah. Um, but, you know, let's circle back around to transmutation. What we do say is very important for us um, in, in the sense that if we keep regurgitating what everybody else is saying, we're creating somebody else's reality. Yeah. We're helping them create it. Um, if you really want to create, uh, you know, some joy and uh, prosperity in your life and freedom, we, I think thought, word, and deed are the tools of creation. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are magicians. We are source energy. And so, you know, in that sense, I suggest we be very careful what we say, what we tell ourselves, because um, from our mouths, from our minds, from our bodies, uh, in our behaviors, um, we are creating. And um, so in that sense, we need to be careful. Yeah, more uh, like a mindful, like you mindful. Know, what yeah. We, what we ingest. Yep. Yep. And what we say and what we, yeah. what energy we then put out into the universe, because, um, you know, truthfully, I don't think the universe cares what we create. We have that freedom. That's free will. That's part of free will. Yeah. Um, so we can create whatever we want. And, and that's why I say, you know, we got to be really careful what we are creating. We have to be mindful, like you said, and we have to be methodical. So how do we transmute all this negativity, negativity, all this bullshit that we're being fed on a regular basis and, and being told, oh, don't speak your truth. Um, how do we transmute this? And, you know, I think step one is we recognize what Erica was talking about earlier is that we live in a free country. We don't live in J Japan, although I think Japan needs some kudos because they're, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people starting to to awaken there and uh standing up for themselves so i give them wicked kudos for that but uh you know we're we live in a free country and um so there's that you know and lately i've been working very hard for myself to be just speaking my truth and and the raw truth not not sugarcoating it or worrying what anybody's going to think about it or anything it's like we need to get past that whole worried about what other people think um, yeah. And I, you know, obviously I'm not talking about going around uh, purposefully offending people and that sort of thing, but we're going to find our spirit tribe by speaking our truth, not by bullshitting. Um, and we, we want to be with other people that are also speaking their truths. So we may not agree hundred percent. That's fine. We don't have to. However, we have to have the ability to say, so we're transmuting this society programming that says um, you have to do it our way. You have to think like we do. You have to fall in line or people aren't gonna like you. We transmute that just by continuing to say, I am going to say my truth. And, I, and I'm being mindful of my words in the sense that I'm paying attention to what I'm creating. Um, so in other words, if, you, you, like I have this situation, I have this thing, this thing that I was supposed to go to on Saturday um, for connecting consciousness. I've been looking forward to it for over a month. Been very excited about it. I want to meet some of my other connecting consciousness um, friends and, and family sort of people. They're my tribe, I think. And um, the weather is going to be absolute crap. It's it's supposed to be like 47 degrees and up to 40 mile per hour winds. And I got to tell you, I didn't come to Florida to go outside and hang out in that kind of weather like all day, yeah. right? and have lunch outside bring a lawn chair all of that I'm like no thank you I let the coordinator know I'm not coming please give my spot to somebody else blah 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 
So why do I tell you this story? I tell you this story because I could look at that situation. I'm being mindful of my thoughts and my creationship and my words. And instead of going, oh, this is horrible. I've looked forward to it for so long. I've already paid for the event, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I transmute any negativity around this situation into a positive and say, oh, now I have all day Saturday to work on my YouTubes. I have all day Saturday to reorient myself to how to uh, edit uh, a, a video because I haven't done it in months. So I, part of me was worried if I'd remember how to do it. You know, me and technology, it takes me a minute. Hey, I got the whole day Saturday to do this. I've got no other expectations, no other plans. So I turn it around from a negative to a positive, or I could be really neutral about it and go, it just is. So mm -hmm. these, this is how we create with, um, you know, the highest uh, vibration is, is, you know, not necessarily labeling things because we don't have to label everything. Not everything has some, some wild meaning behind it. Maybe it just is. Um, but then you know, I hear people talking about, oh, chemtrails and what's in your water and what the, all the shit they put in your food and blah, blah, blah. I kind of want to hit that kind of transmutation. Do you want to tackle that one? Yeah, but I don't want to talk about my point too. So, oh, please. Yep. Yeah. So, by us being who we are, like authentic, like being authentic, and then we feel like we can be who we are without worrying about um, the consequences, right? It shouldn't be like that because that's not how our country is built. Constitution by itself is built to protect and uh, working for the people. So anyhow, um, the point is when we decided to be who we are, and then we don't have to be same people. We don't have to be same race. We don't have to have the same religion. We don't even have to have the same sexual orientation or we don't have to have the same belief on certain things, right? When it requires um, maturity of the soul to accept someone who is different. And especially something you really feel like passionate about, right let's say uh if you are against job and then your family is doing it and then your family thinks like this is the best thing in the world and then it requires your emotional maturity to accept your family or your friend's point of view they think it's amazing so um how are you going to deal with that i'm just using job as an example because a lot of people do have a lot of feeling toward it right so or, jab you mean as in the thing you get in your arm yeah so i wasn't sure if you were saying jab or job <laughs> okay gotcha yeah so when um or some political party right a certain polit political member you have some uh feelings toward them and then your best friend or your husband or your boyfriend is like really into this person and then how how do you come into you know mutual respect like okay you have a totally different opinion totally different way of looking at things then still um being in harmony uh, by respecting with each other's differences and that is part of um emotional speech of growing up to do and then that's kind of one of the uh, benchmark we can all proceed to 5D because once we proceed to 5D, we're gonna meet people from all sort of different world. So and how do you do it? How do you do it? You're sitting next to somebody who's, uh, who's spouting some stuff or talking about something passionately and you, you totally you disagree. You totally disagree, so you can say you're disagreeing it, but you don't have to be emotionally say, oh, you know, I don't agree with you, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to be argumentative. Um, there is some part of what they're saying you can agree on, even a little bit, 1%, 5%. So you will notice some little part, the common ground you do, you, it makes sense to you. 
but I don't know, man. I've listened to some people that I think are totally full of shit. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying it, I mean, it, like, I can't grab onto any of it. How do you deal with that? <laughs> I know, but it, it requires emotional maturity, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So first of all, you know, I, I spoke with this with European friends a lot um, before any of this happens, you know, um, I am American, but I, I did tell my European friends, you know, let's not talk with politics and uh, religion with Americans because they're so immature and they get so upset when we happen to have the same opinion, different opinion. Because um, when we do talk about some different opinion, we do have debate. So it's gonna become uh, not some kind of fighting match, but it's almost like uh, you are in the code and the defense lawyer and then uh, the uh, plaintiff lawyer gonna have a good argument with each other. And so I think what you're touching on is you're saying you don't have to make the other person wrong for you to be able to hold sovereignty with your own beliefs. Yeah. So you could so, just discuss. So when it's happened with, you know, me or my friends, they are saying in Europe, people do debate. So we're going to have a good match. And then you feel good about you finish debate and then you go for a drink. Mm -hmm. As if nothing happened. You're not going to have any kind of emotional feeling toward each other. You don't right. So like the, you but you got to talk about why you're not emotional. And I think one of the reasons why so many Americans are emotional and I passionate. I have no idea why. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because they feel that if the other person isn't agreeing, that it's, 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 it's um, endangering their own belief system. Like it's some kind of personal affront. Or, or the fear behind it all, I think truly the subconscious fear is that they might be wrong. And, and we don't it. have to be right, you know? And, and so what? I mean, so that's how you, how you take that emotion out of there is like if, if as you're talking to somebody, even if you think they're completely full of it, is to like detach a little bit and say, you know what? just because they hold this belief doesn't make my beliefs wrong. And, and, and also I'll add one more thing. If I listen closely, maybe I'll learn something that I didn't know before. At the very least, I'll learn more about this person because as I listen to their beliefs, it's telling me who they are. It's giving me a better picture anyway. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's not a bad thing to, uh, you know, even though I don't agree with what a person's saying, like it, it helps me get to know them. For example, I mean, I could, I have many black friends. I couldn't begin to know how they truly feel about issues that have to do with race because I haven't gone through what they've gone through growing up. I've never been uh, prejudiced against as far as, you know, from my color of my skin. So, you know, even though there are some things that I've heard that I disagree with fundamentally, and I say to myself, well, not all white people, white people do that. Um, but some did, obviously, because they're telling me their story, they're telling me their experience. And so whether their conclusion about it I agree with or not at least I heard the story and I know that person better and I can kind of understand and even have compassion for why they came to that belief because of their experience I mean, most of us don't just have beliefs because somebody told us that that's what we should believe I mean some people are like that most of us formulate our beliefs through our experiences in life and some people have had some really shitty experiences and experiences that are not indicative on, and representative of the whole population however if it's happened to you enough times you might come to the conclusion that all white people are prejudiced or all white people are going to try to put you down you know just for example i mean especially people that grew up in the deep south um who maybe uh, had those experiences or their whole family did, 
you know, maybe that's the background, or maybe they came from, you know, a whole nother country, and they've been prejudiced, people have been prejudiced against them their whole lives, just because they came from another country. Um, so anyway, you know, I think, I think that's how we can take some of the emotion out of it is like, instead of taking their difference in views as an affront, or maybe it's even threatening our own belief system, maybe if we just listen. Yeah. Um, what we talked about with my friends in Europe was um, when we discuss debate, which is exciting. It's not exciting like emotionally, like, you know, it's really exciting. Because after you have a good debate, you feel like you learn something from each other. And that's why, me including, right? Uh, that's why when we have a good debate, even though the other, the other person is having really different opinion, as long as the other person is mature enough to have a good debate, you have such a, a huge emotional satisfaction because you learn something. Or yeah, you're, you're not making it personal. You're 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 just having a discussion, really. Yeah, the minute so, we make the minute we make it personal and look at somebody else's opinion as an attack on ourselves, that's where we go wrong. Yeah, so it does require emotional maturity and uh, uh, maturity uh, of a soul as well, um, you know. Um, so that was our conclusion. And then um, now, you know, things, things put forward, what's happening right now, we, I did come to the situation people get very emotional, right? And... Uh, more than ever, I guess, because of the current situation or something, was a very touch subject before. Now it's multiplying, multiplying. So, um, well, that's because there's forces out there that are trying to get us to fight each other. Yeah, and, you know, so, when we do that, we let them win. Yeah. You know, there's so, dark forces that that thrive on that energy and they've been stirring the pot for a long time on many subjects yeah. so you know no wonder people are more touchy than ever I mean it's just like we've been tweaked to the nth degree so sorry continue but I'm just throwing that in there so it is uh, very important for us to one uh, have core center have your center um, still so you're not going to be shaken like when the other person will come and attack you forever. And for example, right, um, you, can, you can deal with the other person like a mature adult. And that, that's the kind of thing it requires. Um, you know, if the other person or your friend is believing in some person, you totally think is a ridiculous politician, you can at least listen to the other person's point of view, why they admire this person, right? And then if it does make sense to you, you can, you can still come to the agreement. I did that, but I still said, I'm not a big fan of this person. You know, and that kind of stuff really requires maturity but if you come to conclusion or come to understanding, that's how you can handle. So just because majority of your friend is like believing one thing or so into particular political party or whatever, you can still agree on, not a hundred percent agree, but you can find some part that you can kind of like understand why they are saying that. So the other person feels like they are accepted, right? You're not fighting mode. And then you can still say what you have to say. So you are not really backing off of your opinion. You can still be you. So that's my um, you know, tips, how you can handle that kind of situation. And if your friend or somebody is emotionally attacking you, you can just leave that situation because it's not worth for you to even breathing the air with the same room with a person who is acting like that to you and if that's that's your child 
you don't have to tell them how to behave. That's my point. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think, um, you know, my overall statement at this point, and this is what's worked in my life is, uh, and, and I, I spent a lot of years uh, watching and listening to and reading the books of Wayne Dyer. So I'm going to give him some credit right now um, because I think I came to this understanding through his teachings. But um, I'd say stop resentment, anger, and retaliation. Those energies um, are not where you want to be. It's yeah. not going to get you to that point um, where you can have a debate with somebody without being angry. Um, nobody is doing anything to you. We are not victims. Um, people are behaving through through their level of consciousness. Um, and what does that mean? That means um, if we're in a victim role and that's our level of consciousness, we're going to perceive that everybody's out to get us and everybody's... Um, an idiot and uh or they're trying to impose their will on us and we're victims you know there's we got to fight we got to be angry and when we find out that somebody's been doing something to us we got to retaliate and get our pound of flesh you know um those energies aren't going to get you where you want to be no. and um you know we all have a life plan we all chose to experience certain things in this life and um some of them can be viewed as a victim role. Uh, um, but if, you know, if there is agreement ahead of time that you would go through this, then you're really not a victim. That person's just uh, doing their part of the contract. Okay. So that's a higher level way of thinking, but I want you guys to chew on that for a minute. Um, so uh, if I chose in this lifetime to come in and maybe I had difficulty at work, because uh, I had a certain political belief and everybody else thought differently. You know, what if we all chose that before we came in and I wanted that lesson because I wanted to learn to stand up for myself, for example. Um, I'm not a victim if that happened, okay? All those people that are jumping down my throat and giving me shit for my beliefs, they're just doing what I asked them to do before we came into this world. Wrap your mind around that for a minute because if you can get to the point where you can see that that's possible that helps take away the victim role nobody's a victim if somebody's of a lower consciousness than you and uh, you expect them to think the way that you do that's on you that's your bad because we can't expect other people to be at our level of consciousness um if they would they could and they they would do it um they'd already be doing it it wouldn't even be a thought um, and we can raise our consciousness too. I mean, there's, there's beings that are, um, that are walking this earth that serve as examples for us. Um, I see it all the time. I see people treat other people in certain ways and I go, you know what, let me get on that train. I, I need to do that more often. So I think we also have to have a willingness to grow our own consciousness. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if we were to such a high and mighty level, uh, we wouldn't even be in body anymore. We'd vibrate to a different dimension. So there's always something we can learn. And I think if we were to concede that point as well, that opens us up to more and more intelligent um, and higher level vibrational consciousness to come into our being. Yeah. So accepting differences and then don't even think you're the only right person or you are the holding the truth we have a 7.2 billion truth and everyone's truth is true and that what makes um earth beautiful and then once we can accept that we can truly become the member of the galactic society so how do we transmute the food or the physical thing right um that in my personal belief do require for you to have a certain level of vibration. So uh, this is why in the beginning of spiritual journey, people will recommend you to have a healthy food because in order, our body is a physical vessel. So in order to hold our soul, our vessel need to be clean too. And then in order to match your vibration, your body does um, sort of, um, 
drag you down if you are having a lot of chemicals and the toxic food and the lot of junk food and all this chemical toxic stuff inside your body and then you're doing meditating and then your soul vibration is high but your body is like let's say your soul is a plus and your, your body is b or something then you know overall overall vibration with you is not a, a plus so this is why in the beginning people say you gotta watch out what you eat what you do um you know especially like watch over what you ingest physically and the stuff like that because um it does require for you to have certain vibrational level to transmute something and then we get to the point where we start realizing that um that very belief is what's causing it to happen if you imagine that anything you can put in your body is going to make you sick and you believe that that's what's going to happen because that's what you've told your body um, transmutation really has to do with understanding that we are the conductor on the train we're telling the train what it's going to do and where it's going to go and what's going to be good for it you know as far as fuel um i think we get to the point where we understand that uh it doesn't mean i'm going to walk around eating donuts all day because i really like donuts um i'm going to listen to my body what it's asking me for and if today um you know it's asking me for meat i'm going to eat meat if it's if it's asking me for veg or you know some nice blend of that that's what i'm going to give it because i try to really be in tune with my body but you know that day that day or that minute or that hour comes along that i want my red hots or my ice cream or my donut or whatever i mean let's be honest i like sugar i love sugar i think it's great um but see that's why it doesn't bother me because i have that attitude about it uh i'm not eating a straight diet of sugar and on the other hand i'm not denying myself when i really want it and i take the time to enjoy it it's like jesus why are you people shoveling this food down if you're gonna have a treat have the treat enjoy every minute of it every every bite every sensation whatever don't shove it down while you're watching tv or you're on your way out the door or so you know the belief about the thing is what makes the thing not the other way around um if we imagine that everything in our water there's so much stuff in our water that's going to make us sick or what we're breathing in the air is there's chemicals the government put chemicals in the air oh um okay right you're gonna be afraid to walk out your door and breathe the air that's crazy you need the sunshine you need the fresh air you know what are you telling your body it that's what your body does and it believes and it goes it follows in suit with the kind of health that you're telling it so you know is my water pure i doubt it am i gonna tell myself that my water is gonna make me sick no because we need water every day, you know, to drink. Our bodies need water. The animals need water. I mean, the animal outside isn't telling themselves they're drinking mud water, right? They don't give a shit. It's water. They drink it. If it's got mud in it, it's got mud in it. Uh, and why don't they get sick? Is it their body get used to it? Is it they never told their body in the first place that it was bad for them? I don't know. You know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know the answer to that, but I do know for sure that we, I mean, right down to our body size and type and um, whether we have premature aging, you know, those kind of things, we make those decisions. That's another discussion that's, you know, talking about uh, creating our physical vessel, but um, transmutation works much the same way. It, it's based on belief. So for instance, if somebody was forced to have a jab, right and i have i have a family member that was put in a position like this where she was in essence forced she did have a choice but the the if she decided not to i i think she thought that outcome was a lot worse than taking a chance so i said to her i said you know what just imagine that what they're giving you is a saline shot there's nothing in it just saline is if anything else you're benefiting because you're getting some hydration in your body is it try and think about that 
And, um, you know, to my knowledge, she hasn't had any side effects. Now, could she have gotten a saline shot? I've heard some of them are, you know, some of them have been changed over, swapped over by the administration, you know, the former administration that, you know, a lot of those vaccines were grabbed and changed out for benign forms of, you know, the jab. But um, I don't know for sure. She doesn't know for sure. Nobody knows for sure. So why tell yourself you're going to have some horrible outcome? I just don't see that it's helpful. And so I, I encourage people, you know, change the way you think about things. If you're going to have that dessert, enjoy it. And don't tell yourself it's bad or that you're being bad or that something's wrong with you for wanting it. There's nothing wrong with you for wanting something that tastes good. Your body feels like it's got a little kick of energy and you you really enjoyed it. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, I agree with Erica. In the beginning of our spiritual journey, we're told to keep our vessel clean um, and pure and give it the best food and energy and things like that. And then, you know, so I don't have any discord with that principle however just don't go overboard and if you decide to go ahead and have a treat have a treat enjoy it uh savor it and don't tell yourself you're going to suffer some kind of nasty consequence don't tell yourself this is going to go straight to my thighs i mean what kind of message is that to your body i've heard so many women say that shit oh this is going to go right to my gut or this is going to go right on my thighs why I mean, have you ever seen evidence of that? That like, oh yeah, there's the donut I ate last night. There it is on my thigh. You know, I don't know why people do that, but stop punishing yourselves for enjoying life. Because I mean, if we're not here to have some fun as well as, you know, ascend, then I don't know why we're bothering. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, for a while I was told by Archangel Mikhail to be a vegetarian. That was the beginning of my spiritual um, awakening. Uh, for a whole year, it was very hard for me. But the point is, um, I had to do that. And I kind of thought that that was a good idea because besides, you know, he was saying your soul and your body doesn't match up. So you have to raise your body vibration by being a vegetarian. So I was okay. But I could hear the emotion. I could, I could feel the emotion from the animals. And then, um, you know, I was thinking that's a good idea. But I did my own research, okay? And then one of the passage I read was all this animal came knowing they're sacrificing themselves for love for the humans. So yep. I was like, wow, okay, I read that. I cried and I, I felt thankful. And I'm thinking, you know what? Um, maybe if we really, really feel thankful before we eat the meal, and thanking for farmers, thank, thanking for animals, thanking for fish, thanking for vegetables. When we send our love, it's gonna transmute everything. Even even including those meat with broke fear vibration, you can feel. And then I didn't end up being a fruit and vegetarian because my body do require for me to eat certain amount of meat. Otherwise, I'm gonna be super thin. And I don't want to be super thin. I, I want to look healthy for my body. So I changed my uh, diet. But sometimes um, I don't drink sodas anymore. But sometimes, like once in the blue moon, my body suddenly wants to have a Coke. Yeah, yeah, so me I too. Do, I do have it. And then I'm thinking, okay, maybe whatever the reason, my body wants it. And then when you go through a um, regular uh, fasting, your body is no longer addicted to certain kind of food. So your body knows, you know, how to tell you, I need this and I need that. And then I read the channeling message of how to prepare your live body. And then in that channeling message book was saying, everybody is having a different body structure, different genetic structure different um, galactic DNA structure. So during ascension process, people do require different kind of food. So it doesn't mean all of us have to be vegetarian, all of us has to be vegan because some of us cannot be because of our genetic um, yeah. configuration. I feel like garbage if I go too long without some kind of meat. I mean, yeah. I don't eat it every, I don't eat it every day. 
but um, if I were to go a week without any kind of meat protein, I would be probably not feeling very well at all. Mm -hmm. I'd be feeling weak. And that's just a genetic thing. Yeah, you know, that's part of being like human. But I agree completely with what you said about the gratitude before I eat, because I do thank the animals. Um, and that's the Native American way I learned from them, um, especially before they do a kill. Uh, they would, you know, thank the spirit of the animal for its sacrifice. Um, and the reason I think that's important is because that's energy uh so when you're putting gratitude and love into the food that you're about to eat you're then taking that energy uh, of gratitude and love and you're putting it in your body yeah so if some some of your friends or family member is not like following what you believe is right doesn't mean that person is guilty of, of something you know these are very few things you could be guilty right and no matter what kind of religion, every every one of religion tells you the same certain kind of thing you shouldn't be doing. So besides that, you know, there's a lot of things we disagree with each other. So do not condemn your friend or your spouse or whoever do not agree on your way of doing. So in order to create a peaceful world, a peaceful family, peaceful community, you can agree on disagree and let the other person be who they are. So if you don't attack with each other and try to fix each other to doing it this way because you think this is correct, then we're gonna have a peaceful world because everybody's free. Yep. You know? And uh, they just call that respect, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. where I'm where I'm from, they call that mutual respect. Uh -huh. And there's not one relationship that can survive without respect yeah. and be and be enjoyable and healthy. Um, yeah, that's that's like one of the key ingredients. Yeah. So anything. So, you know, some some of you might concern about your family member, you know, took a job or whatever. But, you know, I, I don't personally give my loved ones or friends information i know because if they know what i know it's not a good idea so if they believe this is the greatest thing in the world i just gonna nod like wow good for you you know if they ask me like oh you know uh do you think i'm gonna be okay i just gonna give a little bit of information i don't give one hour lecture or anything because if they find out and they put themselves into fear vibration and they started believing something gonna happen to them. Then they're gonna cause it to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah, so we are not like, even if you know the information, you know, uh, some people do not like um, the people. I, I give you the example in Japan, like um, there is a certain kind of religious people from the Western world who come knock on the door and then try to make you convert into their religion. And the people didn't feel good about these people because it was one intrusive and two, they think that they are the true religion. So everybody was like, either like pretend like they are not home or telling them they believe in something else. But the, my point of saying is, when you think your belief or whatever is true, and then start preaching your loved ones, you know, all knowledge about what you know about, you know, your research. It's, it's intrusive. Gonna, it's, yeah, it is intrusive. And it's not going to turn out to be good for that person unless they want to know. If they're curious, yes, you can share. And they try to observe if they want to know more. Why not, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, Respecting let some be, boundaries. Let, let them be who they are. And that's one of the way to transmute everything. Because we have our own way. Transmuting something is not just one way. We are all unique. So we have our own way of transmuting something. So we can let everybody be who they are. And then just let them be right you know that's kind of the um that's kind of the thing that a lot of people miss um 
we can't expect other people to respect our sovereignty if we're not respecting other people's sovereignty. It's sort of a catch-22, isn't it? You know, we we have love for somebody, so we think, oh, I got to wake them up, or I have to save them, or I have to fix them, or I have to enlighten them. No, <laughs> because like you said, that's intrusive, and it's breaking into their sovereignty. Um, and as you also said, if they ask you, or they, you know, you're talking about something and they want to know more, you know, that's great. That's your sign. Okay. Keep talking. Uh, yeah, I agree with you hundred um, percent. But I think what you're talking about is transmuting all of the struggles, all of the fighting, all of the uh, anger and all of the um, what people call struggling right now that the world's in, you know, the world's burning. I don't see it that way. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people do. And I think what you're saying is, is a good point. You know, like, how do we transmute that? We, we start respecting one another. We stop looking at our, our belief system is the only one. And um, yeah, we talked about food and things like that. So, you know, you, your belief about the food and you know, what you're doing and everything, but transmuting this whole societal uh, meltdown that's going on now, that's, that's a whole bigger ball and um i think that has to start with respect yeah yeah respect and then you know if there's not much you can say to the other person just don't say anything you know that doesn't yeah. mean of you being fake and stop being a victim mm -hmm. you're nobody's a victim everybody's just doing their own thing they're doing the best they can yeah so if everybody feel uh safe enough to be who they are and they say whatever they feel like, world are going to be more peaceful world. Yeah. So that is something, you know, we all need to keep in mind. So being politi politically correct is not always the right thing because nobody has to walk on the eggshells. Really. Good deal. Mm -hmm. So next week, we're going to bring more interesting subject and then so and I'm going to see you next week. Please share, like, subscribe, and then we'll see you guys later. Bye.